Can you file a contempt petition against your ex for failing to make payments or turn over property as required by your marital settlement agreement? Hi, I'm Alicia Kinchel, the owner of Kinchel Law, a family law practice based in the Philadelphia area. Now, when people divorce, sometimes they can come to an agreement between themselves or with the help of their attorney or a mediator and decide how to split their marital assets and their debt. And this will usually be a sometimes a very long document with a lot of clauses in there that spells out exactly what's supposed to happen and when it's supposed to happen. And then often what happens if it does not happen. So what type of recourse the other party may seek and what they may be responsible for. Um, if they're not able to come to an agreement, then the court can fashion an order that will say basically the same thing. Who's supposed to get what? Who's supposed to do what? And in what time frame they're supposed to do it. Now, there are some differences between what happens with a court order versus an agreement. An agreement is a contract. And so generally you're bound by the terms that are in that contract. So if there are certain things you want to happen, um, you're able to be as specific as you like. Now, as always, you want to speak with an attorney, like senior state about the facts specific to your case, especially in situations where you're deciding how to split up your assets and where you're going to sign a marital settlement agreement. Quite often, people do not get an attorney, even when the other party has an attorney, to review their marital settlement agreements. And it's really doing a grave injustice to them. There have been plenty of times where I've had to come back and try to help someone who signed away certain rights and try to help them fix it or try to help them get what they were supposed to get, um, especially if the agreement is silent as to certain things. So you always want to speak with an attorney. Prior to that, most agreements will actually have a clause in there, especially if they've been prepared by an attorney, that you've had the opportunity to seek counsel and you've chosen to move forward without counsel. Often that is a clause in there to protect the person who's writing it and to also prevent the person who is signing it, who's unrepresented from coming back to court later and saying that it was done under duress or by fraud or they didn't have an opportunity to get counsel. So you're basically signing away your right to make some of those arguments. So again, you want to be very careful and speak to an attorney about your case and definitely, absolutely before you sign a marital settlement agreement. Now, again, in that marital settlement agreement and most well-written ones, they will have a clause in there that says, okay, if this person fails to do X or fails to follow any provision in this particular agreement, the other party can file for contempt and that party who is wrong can be uh, required to pay the reasonable attorney fees and expenses of the party who had to come to court and get their money or get title or deed or um, the retirement benefits turned over to them, whatever the case may be, a clause in the agreement can say that whoever is at fault is responsible for paying those attorney's fees. Now, a court can also do that if it's silent, if the agreement is silent to it um, and doesn't have any conflicting causes, clauses in there, a court can do the same thing. And with an order, generally the court will do that. The court will say, um, if it's asked for in the petition for contempt, um, that the other party is required to pay the attorney's fees. There can also be penalties put into the marital settlement agreement. There could be interest put into a marital settlement agreement so that if someone doesn't comply within a certain time frame, um, it can allow for interest. So it, it can be as creative as the parties are, as their attorneys are within the bounds of the law. So it's very important to understand that if someone is not following the marital settlement agreement, you don't just have to throw your hands up. Generally, there is some way to try to effect um, whatever the requirements of the contract or that marital settlement agreement was or that the order was that required the person to do it. And some of the things that the court can do, aside from ordering attorney's fees, um, they can actually put in fines, they can put in other penalties. But again, they're going to look to the agreement first. And then when it comes to an order, they're going to look to what they're allowed to do within the bounds of the law. So I hope this sheds some light on what happens if someone doesn't follow a marital settlement agreement. If the issue is an urgent one, um, such as something was supposed to be turned over, someone's supposed to leave the house um, so the house could be sold, um, you want to make sure you consult with your particular county as to how they effectuate emergency uh, consent petitions or a need for an emergency order to allow something to happen. Um, you don't want to just follow the regular procedures or protocols because there may be a way to get the issue resolved by mitigating it through one of those channels. Again, that's why you want to speak to an attorney. I'm going to always remind you, 
especially when we're talking about the division of marital assets and with filing for contempt that you need to talk to an attorney in this situation. These, this is definitely not one where I generally advise people to go it alone. Um, so if you have questions about this topic, about marital settlement agreements um, or orders, um, please uh, drop them in the comments below. Make sure you hit subscribe and turn on your notifications so that each time we drop a new video, we get a notification. All right, till next time, take care.